Good morning and welcome to the homestead. We are working on our rainwater collection system today. We finally have the majority of the parts and pieces necessary to put the system together and we will show you how to do that. But first things first, for me to get the optimal amount of water in this tank, I need to lower it about another eight to 10 inches. And that's because where our eave is up here, we just need a little bit more room for our leaf collector and the piping to go into the top of the tank so we get the optimal amount of water in that tank. Now that we have our tank in the proper position and oriented the way we want it and the proper height for our eave, now we've got to work on these fascia boards. Now this shop here had exposed rafter tails before, so we need a fascia board to attach our gutter to. That's our next part of the project. After we're done getting that gutter up, which is going to catch our water, we're going to show you how to attach all the parts and pieces to get the water in the tank. And of course, if you've already got a gutter system in place, you don't need to do this. So you see I've got the gutter up on two ladders here. I've managed to not bend it too bad. This is really probably a two person job, but I don't have anybody here with me right now to help me get this up. My wife helped me carry this to the barn from the house where it originated from, but she had to run out with the girls. Okay, now that the gutter is up, I can adjust it for fall. I just need to get it kind of tacked in place so I can play with it and move it so it has a perfect slope to get that water down to the tank. All right, I've got the gutter up and I've adjusted it. So hopefully it has enough fall, but we're gonna test it out with a bucket of water. Now I already did an initial test with water and that's why I knew I had to adjust it. So I'm gonna pour this in. Hopefully I don't have to make another adjustment. Let's see if we can race the water down to the other side. Bingo, now our gutter is done and we can start to attach it to our rainwater tank. Now I have some old leaf guards that I am going to put back on the top of our gutter just as a first line of defense because this area of the barn where this is gets a lot of debris on it. But I also bought this leaf eater. This one happens to be by Blue Mountain Company and a lot of different places sell this. I'll put the links in the description below. This is that first line of defense or actually if you put the leaf guards on there, second line of defense, but this doesn't let anything through it. It's got a fine mesh screen here and it doesn't let any leaves, twigs, chunks of bark, whatever it is, get through there. And in my case, I've actually got some old asphalt shingles up there and there's some grit that comes down from it. So this is actually small enough, a small enough screen. It won't let that through either. And this is the very next thing that we're gonna put together for our system. So inside the package for your leaf eater, you've got several different attachments for different size pipes. We're gonna use this one, which is a neck down from whatever size they put here because this was made in Australia. It's a neck down to a three inch PVC schedule 40 pipe. And that's just gonna attach on the back here like this. And then our three inch pipe will connect into it. Now, if you live in an area where your rain volume is quite a bit higher than where we are here in Texas, definitely use the four inch. So something else cool about this leaf eater is this coupling here is adjustable. So you can see we have ours aimed back and that's because for our configuration, it's gonna be easiest for us to do that. But some have it aiming down, which is also really nice and convenient if you are in a very tight space. So for us, we're gonna turn it like this, have the water come out backwards into our first flush. And we'll show you how to connect all that. And remember, it's really important to dry fit everything together before you put everything together with your PVC cement. Now that we are done installing that leaf feeder, we can install our first flush. It's really important for any system to have a first flush to catch that first initial bit of water, contaminated water, 
off of your roof so that it doesn't get in your tank. We bought this special first flush instead of using just a regular T with a downward pipe because this ball floats in that pipe and then comes to rest against this stopper right here and it doesn't let any contaminated water then back into your tank. We also have this attachment for the bottom of your first flush pipe, which is represented by this small piece here. We're gonna put that on. It's got a filter here. It's got a big end cap for clean out. And it's also got this hose attachment here. That's where that filter comes in handy. If you wanna use that first flush water to water your garden, you surely can. And so that's what this is for. So we've got all this that we put on the bottom of our first flush pipe. So to calculate the volume of your first flush pipe, you're gonna to need to use a little bit of math. That's pi r squared times h. So r is the radius of your pipe. I have a three inch pipe, so that's an inch and a half. And the height for us is gonna be about six feet. So the answer to that problem will be the cubic inches of contaminated water that's inside of your first flush pipe. And you can easily use Google conversions to calculate that to gallons. Now the baseline out there for a first flush is 10 gallons per every thousand square feet of roof space. But that's in a really heavily contaminated area. We're not gonna need that much, so I'm just gonna put the one six foot pipe. It should be good. But if you're downwind of a steel factory or something like that, you might wanna calculate 10, maybe even 15 gallons for your first flush. Let's get this thing on. So remember, right now we just are dry fitting everything. So this pipe's kind of heavy. We're probably gonna need some support with it coming off of this post behind it. But we're just dry fitting now. So we're gonna put this in here. We're gonna check for the height. We've got the hose and clean out on the bottom with good clearance. So this is where it's gonna go. I actually can let go of it. That's where our first flush is on our first flush T. Now we need to connect from this side of the T over to the tank. Okay, check it out. We have got our pipe run from our first flush diverter over to the tank. You can see we have a level on top of it and that is so we can calculate a decent amount of fall for the water to get to the tank because you don't wanna go back uphill or you're not gonna get much water in your tank. And the next step is the scary part, is drilling the hole in the top of the tank. So make sure you've got everything set where you want it before you drill that hole. So we're, we are gonna drill the hole for our inlet right here in our tank, and that is just below the top, which is perfect. And we are going to attach just this shorty piece today to the bottom, but in the future, we are gonna run a pipe all the way down to the bottom of the tank and attach this, and let me tell you why. When you run this down to the bottom of the tank and sit it on the bottom, the water's gonna come down your inlet tube and gently come up and out into the tank through this. So it has some resistance before it comes out of the, into the tank. And that is so it doesn't stir up a lot of sediment that does actually make it into the tank. And that's really important when you're using this water for your house. But I cannot do this today because I need to get inside the tank to do it and I don't have a way to get back out of the tank. I can crawl in the big hole at the top, but I need some sort of ladder, some slim rope ladder or something like that to get back out. My friend Joe over at Homesteadonomics has made his own rope ladder. I don't think I'm up to that task today. I think I'm gonna just try to find one online. But anyway, this will be coming in the future. All right, now comes the scary part, drilling a hole in your $1,800 tank. So as you can see, I got a nice tight fit from that three inch hole saw with our three inch PVC pipe going into it. You want a really tight fit because if any mosquitoes get in here, you're gonna have a serious problem with uh, waterborne illnesses. So this whole system needs to be super, super tight. So you can run actually a bead of silicone around here and that will be enough to keep them out. But we also need to put in an overflow. We have two options, let me show you what those are. 
So it's really important to have an overflow on your rainwater collection tank because if it gets too full, it's gonna come back out your inlet and you don't want that, it will mess everything up. So in this tank, we have two options. We've got this bulkhead fitting, which comes with the tank, already set into the tank. It's an inch and a half uh, bulkhead and we can plumb in some PVC for our overflow. But remember, you're gonna need to put screen on the end of that uh, pipe so that no mosquitoes are gonna get inside of your tank. So we also decided to get this three inch overflow from the same company, Blue Mountain. And it's really cool because it already has a mosquito screen integrated into it. And it sets in your tank just like this. So it'll go directly into it and then the water will gently come out over the top, kind of skim off and come out. And it's simply like the inlet where you drill a three inch hole, feed this into it, and then secure it through all these screw holes right here into the side of the tank with the gasket on the inside. Just kidding, we are actually going to show you what we are doing with our overflow for the one and a half inch up at the top. All you're gonna need is some one and a half inch pipe. You're gonna need a one and a half inch male to one and a half inch slip fitting. You're gonna need a 90 degree, one and a half inch elbow. And I do not know exactly what this is called. So this has a cap that goes on the end. It's a one and a half inch slip and it has this interesting cap that just goes on the side or on the end of it like that. That's going to give you the ability to put the screen in it. So I just cut a little piece of screen to keep out the mosquitoes and we're just going to tighten that over the screen just like that. So I did get this at Home Depot, but once I find the name of it, I will put all of these parts and pieces in the description below. So I forgot to mention, we also have this tank listed in the description below. It's a Norwesco tank, it's 2,500 gallons, and it's made for rainwater collection. So like always, you wanna dry fit before you do anything else. So we're gonna take out the plug out of the bulkhead here. We're gonna thread in our male one and a half inch here. I cut a six inch piece to keep it out away from the tank. We've got our elbow, and then we have a six foot tall um, downspout, I guess you could say here, to divert the water down. Now, it depends on your tank, your location, how the rest of this system looks after this point, and where you pipe it to, but this is how ours is gonna look. And then we will put this slip fitting over the bottom of our downpipe. So of course, keep everything away from any other connection in your tank because in the future, we're gonna use this bulkhead to connect to another tank. Stick around on the channel because in the very near future, we're gonna be showing you how we're gonna be adding a pump to this and running our lines for our irrigation for our garden and also to the house. Now, I want you to go check out our brand new channel merchandise, like this t-shirt, which is right below the video or on the store tab on our main page. And now go check out this video right here, which shows you exactly how to put together a 20 by 40 Grower Solutions greenhouse. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.